Limited. You may recognize me from some of my earlier work. No entry, no running, and my favorite caution, slippery surface. Of course, my work doesn't just stop there. I've also done no diving, no pushing, watch out for falling objects, and I've had my share of slips, trips, and falls. I've been electrocuted, stood on a cliff, and even been set on fire. However, I am a trained professional, so don't try any of this on site. But when it comes down to it, I'm just like you. I live an active life. I like to windsurf, canoe, hike, skateboard, swim, hang out with friends, water ski, ride a bike, ride a horse, wear a dress, dive, read a good book, go to work in my pants and sometimes shoot stuff. I keep clean, recycle, and have a massive pair of scissors and a comb. So you could say I've been around a bit, but let's face it, most of the work I do can be avoided. Like wearing a harness at heights in case you fall, be aware of your environment, stay away from obvious hazards, and don't stand underneath or in between big things that can squish you. In our line of work, we all need to put a little bit of thought into safety when we're designing a project. For example, wouldn't it be better if the safety switch wasn't located behind two giant fans at the base of an electrical shaft? Or if there was a way of working at heights without actually working at heights? Maybe we could make some of the big stuff somewhere else and just bring it in when we needed to, and then just put it together on site. If only we could travel into the future to see how design decisions made today can have an impact on tomorrow. When this office was designed and built, a certain type of carpet was used in the fit-out. Unfortunately, everyone blamed Mr. Plumpton's love of experimental cooking, particularly his Sprout and Camembert pie, for the nausea and obnoxious gases that were making everyone sick. The real culprit was actually the carpet, off-gassing, slowly releasing toxic fumes. Getting rid of Mr. Plumpton didn't really help. And who would have thought that when Sam here was digging a trench, because it wasn't properly shored, he was actually digging his own grave. But that's not all. Even some of the simplest design decisions can have huge implications. When this hospital was finished, the height of the light fittings and the need for extra bed space meant that the only way to change a simple light bulb was by trampoline. Even something simple, like opening a window, can be a potential hazard when not considered properly. If we journey further into the future, we can see how mankind has evolved to adapt to deal with these hazards. For example, the problem of falling objects, and indeed falling people, will be a thing of the past. And that those hard to reach places will no longer be considered hard to reach, but more a test of skill and flexibility. But problems seldom go away, they're just replaced by new ones. The reality is, we don't have a time machine, and it's unlikely we will change into flying rubber people. But the WHS laws around the country have changed. We now have a responsibility to remove hazards through the design process. At Lang O'Rourke, we want to lead the way in smarter thinking and safer design in the life cycle of our projects, construction, design maintenance, operations and demolition. The smarter we are, the safer we become, which means more construction off-site, less working at height or in confined spaces, fewer accidents now and in the future, shorter delivery times and happier clients. So please, think about the decisions you make today and the impact they'll have tomorrow. See you around and stay safe.